behind every successful individual is a mentor. Success requires mentorship. Success requires help. And one thing going throughout this process, and you'll get this, uh, all of you, well, may, most of you will have to take the learning how to mentor, introduction to mentor, Toastmasters challenge. And so that's what this project's about. That's what this speech is about. And what I've found is that behind every, every successful individual, there's often somebody who has had uh, strong positive influences on that individual. And let's look at some of the more famous mentor-mentee relationships throughout history. Oprah Winfrey was able to call Maya Angelou her mentor. Steve Jobs mentored Mark Zuckerberg. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett mentor each other because that's, they're just so cool like that. <laughs> and then even Harry Potter could rely on Professor Dumbledore. Too bad James isn't here. I was hoping that he would be here. That was for him. Fictional or not, mentoring plays a big role in the development of individuals' lives, both personally and professionally. However, there is no one-size-fits-all approach to mentoring. There are various different mentorship styles, but you have to figure out which mentorship style is right for your unique mentor-mentee relationship. Each relationship is unique, and you have to bring a unique perspective to that. While doing some research on the mentorship styles, I love to do research, so hopefully this isn't boring. I found I found an interesting Harvard Business Review article that jumped out to me. It really connected with me. The article was about what the best mentors do. And what the author was able to do was boil an actual mentee and then those individuals who have actually never been mentored. So it's almost like the mentorship never happened. And so this shed light onto my personal experiences through the Foundations of Leadership program, which I think many of you will be in or have participated in, you're required to take on a mentor. This mentor was genuine and nice, but I still felt like the mentorship was kind of forced. Ultimately, I was not able, I was not able to take away as much as I hoped I would from that mentor-mentee relationship because I didn't feel like I related to the mentor personally. There was not that basic relationship prior to us engaging in a sort of mentorship. At the same time though, I was informally developing a mentor-mentee relationship with a coworker, a retired coworker of mine within my program. He would come by my office every Friday and we'd talk about the future, we'd talk about uh, the world, we'll talk about how the program is looking. Initially, I didn't look at this as a mentor-mentee relationship. I just looked at this as me talking to my coworkers. But when I reflected on it, I found that I implemented and used feedback that I got in those engagements with him much more than I did the much more that I implemented and used feedback that I gained from the formal FLP mentorship. And, and so I wondered a bit about that. Why was that? And again, it reinforced my, my understanding and reinforced the author's point, the point that good mentorships are built off some sort of rapport. There should be some sort of rapport between the mentor and mentee before combining it into that mentorship. Point two. The second point the author made about mentorship was that the mentor should focus on character rather than competency. And I think this is a real delineation between coaching and mentoring. Coaches are, tend to lose interest or tend to lose focus on the individual once that individual has attained some sort of short-term goal or has acquired some sort of job skills. This point asserts that mentors should not should not lose focus on the mentee. They should continue to invest in the mentee far beyond the acquisition of some short-term goal. Ironically, but thankfully for me, my childhood soccer coach didn't stop his investment in me once I figured out how to pass the ball well or dribble well or play some sort of defense. He was intent on continuing, and on continuing to invest in me to help me become the best person that I could possibly become. The, the things that he taught me while growing up and playing soccer, which I played from about the age of five up until high school, still stick with me today. I learned to become more self-aware, more disciplined, and those are things which I think have made me somewhat successful today. Point three, one of the most common traits of a good mentor is the ability to think optimistically over thinking pessimistically. As mentees, 
we approach our mentors with some of our toughest challenges and we're in hopes of using them as a sounding board which we can test our ideas on and we can get their feedback on how we can potentially make those ideas better. For example, in my program, I was in charge of the development of an app which we would then release to our national network of 60 or so centers. This was always going to be a complex challenge because releasing a technologically advanced app to a network where you know they're 20 years behind the times is just never going to work. Um, but I still threw out some of my crazy ideas to my mentor in hopes that he could provide me with some feedback or point me in the right direction. And instead of responding cynically and saying, oh, you know this is not going to work, we're a bunch of old guys, we don't like to use phones and technology. <laughs> instead, he invested his time and effort in trying to help me figure out ways in which this could potentially work and how he could potentially help me get this idea off the ground and get it to work. So in this instance, my mentor infused energy and optimism into my ideas instead of mixing them with pessimism and cynicism. And ultimately, this allowed me to open up and I was able to, sh to share more of my unconventional ideas with him in hopes that I could take them further. And point four, the final but most interesting point to me that the author made in the HBR article was that good mentors often place them, their loyalty to the mentee over the company. And that's kind of interesting when you think about a manager's perspective. Your highest goal is really to recruit and retain top employees. It makes your life easier. But when I thought about it longer, the more the manager is invested in the employee of the company or the mentee, I think the more likely it is that that mentee will hang around and want to work and engage with that manager. They're invested in their growth. I was lucky enough, and through my informal mentorship, which I sort of developed in my program, to have a mentor like that. He always put my individual growth over his loyalty to the organization that we both worked within. He would tell me how important, how important I am to the future of the program, but at the same time, he would uh, challenge me to go and look for opportunities outside of the program. I was always at a loss for words when he'd send me an opportunity to look at, but however I know, in the end, he's always trying to bring the best out of me. So in conclusion, iron sharpens iron. And in this case, people help sharpen other people. The best mentors understand their mentees, trying to figure out what drives them and what their passions are. I've been lucky enough to develop relationship-based mentorships. And I've been lucky enough to share two of them with you today. And I can only hope in the future uh, that, can, that I can guide my mentees half as well as my mentors have guided me. Thank you. Oh.